Hey everybody, welcome back to our deck profile. Today we're going to take a look at Herminia, also known as Powerful. This deck has some really nice upgrades in the new booster box uh, for Lyrical. I would really like to show this deck off and all the potential it now holds. I've been a big fan of this playstyle and deck since the first set when it was really, really bad and underperforming. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to comment, like, subscribe and let's get right into it. We start off with the right line, of course we have our basic starter our great one really annoying at times so the entire stick of powerful is to have zero soul at every single point of the game the great one facilitates this by on um, Vanguard the rigor circle you soul less one discard a card and draw a card this is your main turn one play you want to do this every time as the second skill is if you're riding the great two you don't need to discard a card if you have no soul. And having no soul is also called being in the powerful state. So all of your effects you need to be in the powerful state for to really get you going. Grade 2, very simple. During battle this attack, he gets plus 2. And the same skill as a grade 1, you don't need to discard if you're in the powerful state. A plus 2k might seem useless, but if you pair it up with an 8k booster, it's actually quite nice and can enable some better pressure numbers and hit over the offensive, especially going second. Now, for our grade 3 in the right line, I chose the old Herminia. Why do I choose this? Well, first of all, I both strongly believe that the new Herminia is not that good on your first grade 3 ride. Her main skill needs 3 phase down CB, and you will have 0 phase down CB when you ride up to grade 3 the first time. And at the same time, the restand skill needs to discard Herminia, so you're able to proc the 5 attacks. You'll have to discard a Herminia, which will force you to run the old Herminia on your main deck and kind of brick you all for a, an extra attack that's actually not really worth it because we'll have a nicer turn on the old Herminia just abusing Rally and getting the two Rally procs off. That's my main play. I try to be at 2 CB on turn 3. Use Rally, kind of last 2. Swing Vanguard. This card across a recent Rally. Gets minus one counterblast reduction to the next time counterblast. Then ball tech the counter charger, and another drive check. Moving on to the trigger lineup, we have our over trigger. We run the lyrical over trigger because it's very strong. If you check this turn one, you instantly win the game pretty much. I've seen it happen before. You are an aggro deck that commits a lot of field presence on turn two, and having this boost up your entire field by 10k is kind of crazy and will overwhelm your opponent in numbers incredibly quickly. We run three draw triggers, effect draws, because we want to see our pieces, four heal triggers, and of course, eight crit. We can do easily four drive checks across three battles, a one, two, one, sometimes even more additional drives, depending on our setup. So we want to be able to stack crits, we want to be able to stack that on the restanders, we want to be able to really abuse the crit pressure that these critical triggers give us, so that's why we're running 8 crits. Next up, we'll go over the Great One to the deck. Starting off with Elementaria Sanctitude. This card, it's, it's an RPG, it's a quick, um, it's a blitz order. It's really good, everybody runs it, of course. Then 3 PGs, same reason, PGs just mandatory for any deck. Then, one of my newest inclusions in the deck, which I didn't do originally, is the Jeweled Beast. Now with the 50 card update, we have 4 extra slots and I was wondering what I should put in. And one of the issues you occasionally, but very rarely, run into is having too many cards in your soul. This card takes care of this by removing 2 of them, which are your right line. So if you break a early game, you don't fight the soul, uh, soul Blast pieces. You can unbrick yourself with this card relatively quickly. This still doesn't stop some cards like i believe it's called clean sweep it's a dark state card that puts three readers into your soul really mess with you and if they do that if you know especially against i think omena gruzio really runs that card if you're playing against omena gruzio just be mindful of this effect think your play is true as you'll probably have to soul bless out of th at least three if you put up three readers at the end of turn which oftentimes you do next up Probably the most important grade 1 in the deck is Musetta. So when she boosts, she gives you front row plus 2, which is relevant to numbers, because you then essentially she's a 10k booster of your Vanguard, making 23, oftentimes 28k on your first swing. 
because there are multiple effects that give plus 5 to your vanguard. Either her own effects or Rally, who gives plus 5 to Vanguard. The other effect is insanely strong in any turn. It lets you bot deck her to counter charge. We always want to proc this card every single turn, going starting at turn 3. We, as much as we want to have this counterblast face down for both of our minions' main effects, we also need the counterblast face up to actually plus all of it. We, we still need to pay counterblast after battle, man. We need to, need to get our rallies off, we need to get our, um, our drive checks rolling. As such, this card really takes care of you, and in turn, she enables a very aggressive playstyle. Next up is Signe. This was the sneak peek promo, I believe. So everybody should easily be able to get a copy of this one. It's a really nice card that comes up Sometimes it's important when you like break a little, you don't know if things push out soul. Essentially, the first skill you'll never use when you need a boost, you can give something plus five for counter plus one. You don't you don't need it anymore. Your, your deck's better than this now. What is relevant, however, is the second skill, which says to restand at the end of the battle and remove a card from your soul. Notice how this is remove a card from your soul and not soul blast. As such it's not a cost and you don't need to. But you can, in case you have too much soul, you can get out by other effects. Really good, really strong. Oftentimes you'll put this behind your uh, front row that restands, swing with it, then restand attack with Vanguard, restand this front row, and you'll have an extra booster. This makes numbers, it's, it's pretty nice. Now, this is probably the first card I would cut if I had newer cards. We don't just because she's a powerful name, and powerful names are quite important in this deck. Last up for the grade 1 lineup is Libita. Libita holds a special place in my heart as really allowing you to freely early game pressure people. This card says at the end of the turn, if you have 5 or more powerful names on the field, you can bounce the column she's in. That's, it lets you commit pieces from hand and not worry that you are just minusing too much and we also reuse the on place effects of those pieces next turn which all of the new ones allow you to board spam which is something this deck really needed and it has now with the new grade 2s which we'll go over shortly it's just a really solid solid card the second effect when you have a Herminia Vanguard with no soul she gets plus 5k shield that just gives the deck a little bit more tankiness and it gives us the, the survivability to really play up to the meta. Next up, we'll go over the great twos of tech. Starting us off with Custodia. Custodia is an integral piece to this deck. It's one of the new cards from the Ford Lyrical set. On place, let Soul Blast 1 to check top 5 for a powerful unit. This is your best turn to play as it builds you a field and gets rid of your soul all at once. This is a great card. The second effect gives you plus 5k shield just like Libetta. It's just incredibly good value. This will this card with the beta behind it is my ideal going first. Well, turn two setup as I can then bounce this back to my hand, and I'm good to use this again next turn to use up my other soul. As committing things to the board for free is just really good as it gives us more hand size. Which we will need to be able to survive some of those crazy push turns of strong decks. Next up, the promo for powerful Stolas. She is incredibly pretty, I, I find. Really nice color design. I also love the fact that it's a full art since it promos. So, what does she do? She's on place. You can remove a card if you have one from your soul. So you don't have to, so if you have other things that use up a soul, you want to use that first, obviously. Then you can revive a powerful from your drop zone, but for the rest of the turn you cannot revive another powerful, well, any card in general. So this is another card that actually spawns two bodies. It also lets you recycle cards that are in the drop, because before we had problems with if our integral pieces went to the drop zone, and we have no other ones, we just brick and don't really do much. So now this card gives us a bit of a second life in case we commit pieces early and we need those pieces back <laughs> because I'll be honest if you don't have your rally on turn 3 
you are not in a good position at, for the next portion of the game. Uh, her other effect is if you have two powerful names, she gets boost. So just have those three powerfuls up, which is quite... It's, it's easy, but you can ruin yourself on it when Musetta goes to the bot deck, so be sure to keep in mind how many powerful units you have on the field. Then, last but not least, the one I've been talking about quite a bit in the deck profile is Rally. She spiked in price, it's... I still cannot believe the fact that she went like times 20, 30, 40 times in price since I bought her. It, I, I love this, uh, I love this card. It's the first sign of hope that this deck had to be playable. So her skill is an act skill, which is your base soul blast one, so you can use this every turn to use up your soul blast in case you don't have anything else. Really good, really strong. You can soul blast one to give you Vanguard plus five. Like I said before, that's really good because then you can make 28k with your Vanguard. Her second effect is a part where for the powerful deck it's really broken. You play counter blast two, you get plus 10k, and if you have a Herminia Vanguard, you can do drive checks. That's wonderful, especially when we combine it with our next card, the new Great Tree Herminia. Now, this is a card that is loaded with amazing effects, and really a lot of potential. Let me bring it a little closer so you guys can watch the beautiful artwork. It's probably one of the better Herminia arts, in my opinion. I still think the original LSR is probably the prettiest one. So, what does she do? She has a continuous effect during the battle phase. If your damage on is three or more phase down cards, every counter blast you play is reduced by one. What does this enable? Our rallies, if we have three phase down CB, suddenly all cost one CB. And that's the main thing you want out of it. You want to abuse rally as much as possible in this deck. At least that's how I've been playing it. And that's how I've had a lot of success playing it. As some of my friends have so kindly pointed out as they were angry after our games. Maybe we should cut that out. This is also relevant for her second effect as it at the end of the battle you can pay this card with counter plus one if you have persona route written. You can base with counter plus one which is then reduced by one when you have three phase down because everything in the front row is reduced by one. Well to be precise the powerful cards but we only play powerful cards really outside of Solas which it pains me that it's not a powerful card, but regardless, Catalyst 1 to restand our front row powerful rear guards. Really strong. Or if we haven't Persona ridden, you can discard a Herminia copy, which I assume is why people might put this in their right line to try and cheese off the 5 attack combo and overpay their counterblast costs and not do. <laughs> Two rally procs on turn three, which really good guys. It's plus ten plus ten and two drives. So yeah, this is a beautiful addition. It's a finisher card. I have done games, I've won games where I didn't even need to ride into her. So that's it just proves how strong an aggro deck this really is, honestly. Also, she counts as the original Herminia, so you can persona ride between both of them. That's the, the usual dress-up ability, which just makes it really solid and is a good reason for, you know, playing the original in the right deck. Alright guys, we'll go over a quick turn to setup. So usually you would have this and this in your drop. You would have some other cards in your drop. Usually I hope to find the bird early game so I can discard it and we use that the early game so I can discard it. So you're right up. We don't need to uh, discard forward anyway, so that's perfectly fine. And I said ideally you find Costadia. Use your skill to soul blast one. So your soul is now empty. And then you, you hope to find Lubita to put her here or have her from hand. Ideally you just have something there. And then you have Solas here, use her skill to revive this from drop. This is really, really strong. So what you can do is 18, this swings for 20, you do your drive check, and then this also swings for 20. So going second, we have two swings that swing over defensive. So that's a really good turn to play. 
Next up, we'll take a look at our turn tree play real quick. So at this point, you would just write up. This would have been bounced to your hand. They might have. The other people would probably swing into this, as they are scared of it. At this point, we would probably have two CB. You try to manage your CB as much as possible towards this two CB. It's really strong. So now you can again commit this. Soul blast one. Check your top deck. Hopefully find this. If not, try to find just a piece as you go into it. Then you can just call the Libita again. Maybe overcall this if you have extra hand. Now this is the ideal turn tree setup. So what you would do is you swing here, kind of last one, you do a drive, put that in your hand. This would reset end of battle. Attack here. This would give plus two to the front row, which is relevant because it makes all of these 10k boosters. Let's swing for 23. You would do your two drive checks. End of battle. You discard a card from hand, restand. Her effect goes to the bottom of the deck. The counter charge. After that, you swing. You swing with Rally. <laughs> counter last one. And you got to do another drive check. All this while stacking 10k every time you did this. For the first time you'd be 28, this time you'd be 38. Then you swing here. Uh, for at least 20 because of plus 2 front thrust. Actually the second attack would have been at least 40. Which, you know, it's not as relevant going second, but it's very much relevant going first. This would swing 20, this will also be where you stack all your triggers on, so depending on how many triggers you've seen, this thing will exponentially grow in power. This is a standardized um, great tree setup. Going f beyond that, if you have like 3 more CB, it's simply Persona right into your new Vanguard. Abuse Rally as much as possible and kind of just do the same thing but better. You would swing here, here, swing with Vanguard. Of course, she would have kind of lasted two. It's just... So now you have three face down CB, which means her skill is free. You restand. This should have already restood. And then you can again swing here swing here, counter blast 2, minus 1 because we're treat face down, but she gets another drawing. So this was my Herminia deck profile, again put all the cards out here for you to see. These are the important pieces of the deck in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile because I, I really enjoy this deck a lot. It's a lot of fun to just beat people down, try to aggro them down as quickly as possible still have a decent hand size because you want to take some early damage but not too much so you know, the early game is probably the hardest part of this deck because you try to manage your cb amounts regardless i hope you guys enjoyed leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me and i'll see you guys next time bye bye